that's what's going on today. I have to put it in the uh, perspective. I had a snow day. I appear to have eye shadow, but I don't. I've let a few days go by since my last cluster of rants. I don't even specifically recall what ledge I was on. I just like ideas to come about about this. <clears throat> since since my last entries, I've I've looked at just a couple of photographs of my son. I uh, I did it by choice, by just typing his name into my computer. And three of his pictures, you know, he used to be a living, a living person an actual person who did stuff, who wanted things. I think about that, you know, like existentially, dealing with existence. What are we after we die, you know? What are we before we're born? I don't know. It's um, before I go there. Um, I did watch <clears throat> a couple of videos from junkies who were like my son, um, his age, worse than than him in the sense that he uh that they, these these kids were just shooting up in bathrooms and but Forrest might have done that I don't know I don't know you know I know he used heroin enough to drive his car into an iron fence and almost killed himself that was um that was like five years ago and that whole fall and spring he was using it a lot. So when I heard this kid's story, I was like, well, well, okay, so he went and he picked up his heroin and was looking for a safe way to shoot it, safe place to shoot it. It's about location. So you're not going to go home because that's too obvious and you can't go to where you're supposed to go because that will be, you know, uh, clearly outing yourself and I don't know. So they go to like the public parks and park their cars in neighborhoods or go to a house that somebody else does it and I don't know. It's it's disgusting, but that's that's the game. And uh yeah, and then they'll show the dad or the dads because there's usually behind one of these junkies, a very loving parent or parents that are, you know, can't believe, oh, not my son, you know, not my kid. Uh, and as soon as I, I heard this really clearly nice person and responsible person, you could see he was like planning on raising a young man like I was with my son Forrest. You know, not, not a douchebag, not somebody who doesn't pay their bills or work or, or do awesome stuff, you know? Like a really good person, an awesome guy. And he was just, uh, uh, they were both alive. But the kid is all like messed up too. It's like there just seems to be this eternal addiction that that Forrest must have had, I just didn't know. And for that, I will always 
be upset with myself for just not for thinking that he beat his addiction and wasn't ever going to really be troubled by it. And I can go through all those, uh, you know, reasonings, as I should, you know, the, the ones that say, well, he at 23 years old, he's living away from home by many, you know, by a thousand miles, and um, he's in college, you know, we know all of the, all of the things I knew, I could see his bank records, I, I was, as I said, I supported him, I could see every time he put gas in his car or bought something to eat, I could see where he ate, not that I, you know, was, I was happy to do that. I was like, yeah. And, you know, it was, he would ask for money. I would see that he was running low on money and I'd slip in 50 bucks, 60 bucks, you know. If he was going for grocery shopping, you know, I'd type him, I'd text him, when are you going to go? And, and go buy good food, you know, really good food. He was, uh, he was into that. Yeah, so so these junkies and and I realized that as much as everybody goes through the withdrawal and the hunger and the sickness and and all that stuff and I suppose after you're you're hooked you just, you know, you're stupid enough to get there, you got to have it and then you're stupid enough to go play that game out. You know, as if it's a winnable game. It's like watching, uh, you know, rare animals charge off cliffs. It's, it's, it's horrifying from, from this perspective. And then when you see, like, other people's, like, little videos of their lives like I'm doing, but they're much more, more, uh, um, I guess, they're unwrapping what it is like to be an addict on a daily level. And I've, I've largely avoided that. You know, I've read a few books, which was just, they just repeat, you know, and then I, when I start reading the shorter testimonials or articles or essays, you know, they, they go through these, like, I, I feel like I'm just on that loop where I'm just seeing how far the, the addict can go until they either kill themselves, bankrupt, and frustrate their entire family. Fuck. I know you must hate yourselves as an addict. I did. You know, when I was just, just drinking every day, I realized I'd become, I am an alcoholic at, or, or it certainly could be one in terms of just being a drunk. And, and I'm a very depressed drinker. You know, I notice like if I drink and I get depressed while I'm drinking, you know, that's the direction I am. I'm not a happy drunk. Uh, and even last night walking home from my jujitsu, which I have to force myself to go to because, you know, it's hard. Uh, it always feels amazing once I'm there and once I'm done, the rush is like, uh, I'm going to say it's better than heroin for me. At least, you, you know, I'm not bankrupting my family and killing myself. Um, it's a healthier option. Uh, I wanted a beer. Or I thought, like, oh, I'll go get it. I did that conversation in my head about, should I get a beer? I will get a beer. Like, oh, you know, I'll have a beer tonight. Well, well tomorrow I might not because of the, you know. And I was like, stop. It's like, fuck beer you know, off, off the table, because it's, it, that's how quickly and easily this stuff becomes a problem. And I also knew 
that I would feel better today not having drank a beer. And then, of course, the double size bottle is cheaper than two individual beers. Like all that crap, all that um, alcoholic addiction chatter. Yeah, so like the just the bullshit that a an addict endures from themselves. Just the 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 constant rationalization in the wrong direction. And I guess what I'm in my own life, I knew I was doing that. And I know I'm doing that while I'm doing it. And sometimes I'm even say, I have even said to myself, I'm still going to do the thing I know I'm not supposed to do, the less desirable thing for the thing that I desire. You know, so it's the game is thick, it's dangerous. But that's what got me, gets me out of it most of the time is realizing that the consequences are dire. They're real, they're deep. They're, they're, they're pregnant with, with possible uh, pain and damage to innocence. Um, they're, they're, they're also like damaging to the, 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 what I would say is the soul of a person, the feeling that you are, are, are important and special and, and, and some, in your space, your, your, your vessel is sacred. You know, anything that like uh, violates or hurts you, even if you're hurting you, you know, that's, that's especially if you're hurting you. Yeah. So I could argue with myself, like having that beer last night, well, that's not hurting me. But what about if I drank the big beer, you know, and I did it again, you know, and, and, and it becomes like your sluggish way. And it does, you know, if you drink and get drunk more than once a week, you're an alcoholic. And if you have to do that, you know, so, and certainly, you know, I know people are going to be like, what are you talking about? I drink every week and I'm not an alcoholic. Yes, you are. But what about twice a week? Just double it. And, and then if you still want to argue, go to three, what if you're drunk three times a week, straight up drunk? then, you know, you just reach a threshold. Don't argue. Just reach that threshold and see if it looks like you. But none of these addicts, well, uh, maybe there's many addicts out there that are going through a, a taking themselves, respecting themselves to, to a degree where they yank, they drag themselves out of this, this, uh, just bundle of lies. You know, it's a lie. Heroin, drug use, it's it's just, you know, it's a complete shortcut to nowhere. And they were talking about the high. The high of heroin is so good. It's so amazing, like the well-being, the the instant rush. The prick of the needle and you're boom, you're just you're just high right away and you're just you're just gone. So yeah, I get it. I see the allure of that. Like that's gotta be really fun in a sort of, you know, uh imaginary way. But the reality of doing that, of what that does to real stuff, real biology, chemical, you know. Uh, mechanisms. It's not a story, you know, it's a, it's a reality. It's a logistical condition. And <clears throat> it's just complete uh, bullshit in the sense that you're just not going to, it's not a survivable enterprise. And even if people, these people that I see that are getting off heroin, like the way they talk is, it's all affected. Their thinking is affected. I wonder how much my son was that way, and I didn't realize that. He was super bright. 
he exercised his mind. He was able to get very high grades in his school, in his university, and, and he got a scholarship, and, and he was, you know, very, very smart and intuitive, and, and, and he smelled rats, you know, like when something was, was bullshit, he would, he, he knew, he could, he could sense it. But why couldn't he see that for this, you know? And yeah, the addiction, the addiction, but the thing is that the addiction is, it, it is everything. Like you can't cite the addiction as the reason to go try to take some shortcut to what? To illuminate yourself, to feel better, to, to contradict your boredom, to, to, uh, to, to negate some presumable depression or, you know, bad situation you're having in your life. And trust me, your life, whoever you are, is not as bad as somebody's who isn't doing this. It's not an excuse. We all have heartbreak and depression. I don't even want to go into some of the things that happened to me. I was left standing, so I felt really lucky just to be in this world, to be able to do what I wanted to do. And my experiences with moderation have been really amazingly good. You know, smoke a joint, have a beer, roll down the hill, have sex, you know, work out, learn to fly. What the fuck is the matter with people? That they would think that this is somehow going to help. Oh, God. <clears throat> and if you're just young and getting hooked into it by dealers, you just please drop dimes on these people. Just call the police. I took a picture of somebody's license plate, and I know that they're dealing heroin. I'm waiting to see them one more time, and then those plates are going right to the email, right to the police. I'll print them out and mail them. But, you know, cigarettes are everywhere. Beer is everywhere. Uh, all kinds of stuff are everywhere. And it's sort of a... I don't want to live in a society that just, like, makes everything illegal because it's bad for you. You know, it's tricky. you got to take responsibility for living in a free society. And the, the process out of that is intelligence, education, real common sense, not superstitious thinking and religious thinking. Um, a peer, you know, open, open it up to people that, that have opinions, people that care about you and people that maybe don't even know you. Get, get a uh, um, put your what is that the intelligence of the of the herd you know we all have now added our thoughts to a large body of a, a very powerful and true information and I grew up in the 70s I knew heroin was incredibly stupid then and I was just, I didn't know anything. Nobody told me anything about anything. I was in a very sheltered, repressed, abusive childhood. And when I got out of it, you know, I, I could have, I saw it all. And I worked with junkies on a job. I had this painting gig in San Francisco and this, this girl used to show up. She was the girlfriend the lady who owned the painting cut, she was like, what a drama, what a scene, what an absurd scene. I feel sorry for that father in this documentary because he's just, he did everything he could. He spent all his money, didn't do anything. It was the kid was sent off to prison or something. Sound familiar? Ridiculous. 
ridiculous. So it's a shortcut. It's a cheap shot. It doesn't work. It won't work. It's not for the strong. It's not for the intelligent. It's not for the creative. It's for the naive. It's for the weak. It's for the indifferent. And don't kid yourself that it that it isn't because then you're then you're avoiding the the strength you need which comes from inside you from the better you you're not a good person cuz you potentially could be or once was you're a good person if you are doing what a good person does today all day and tomorrow all day and it's consistent Anyway, I'm not a drug counselor or a professional de-heroinizer. I'm just saying that my son threw away his life and that thousands of people younger than him, older than me, are doing it. So I can say to my, my uh, species that this is your responsibility, your fault, your decision. And I hope you get out of it. I hope you can summon the strength from yourself, not from rehab, not from anything else, just from being sick of the results that you're getting. 